yummy cookies. Mmm, that is good. Hey everybody, Joe Workman here, and you know I've been working hard on um, a lot of cool stuff coming down the pipe. But I took a little respite yesterday, and um, I shipped a really cool update to Cookie Jar. I completely redid the entire thing from scratch, and I wanted to do a quick video just to kind of show you the new features and um, how the new version works and stuff like that, right? Um, now, if you notice, I don't have my Big Nights mic set up, so apologize if the audio is a little wonky. And I don't have a cool office backdrop today, but I just wanted to knock out a really cool uh, quick video for you guys to show you this awesome new update. So I hope you enjoy it. Okay, so here is the demo file that ships with Cookie Jar. Um, this is a updated new demo file. So if you want to check it out, go ahead to go to our doc portal, go to the Cookie Jar page and download the sample project from there. And it's this project that we're looking at right now. Okay, now. Cookie Jar 2 is completely different. As I said, I redid everything from scratch. So if you have existing cookie jars on your page, it'll say Cookie Jar Legacy V1. Um, if you want to use all these new features, you're going to have to delete that and add the new cookie jar stack to the page. Uh, well, before you delete, make sure you, you know, copy over any sort of content or text that you have and stuff like that, right? Okay, so what is new in Cookie Jar 2? As I said, I completely redid it. Um, you know, Cookie Jar, the first version, it was kind of tricky because you had to do like snippets in various places and wrap it around your Google Analytics code and stuff like that. And I wanted to completely streamline that so that you didn't have to worry about snippets and everything was encapsulated inside the stack. Really cool stuff. So um, if we look, I added Cookie Jar to the page here. And uh, let's just go over the settings. So style settings, simple. You have either position on the top or bottom padding, the background color of cookie jar. Okay, advanced layout, we'll be going over that in a little bit. Show sample statement, that's just a little sample statement. If you wanna copy and paste that, you can use that. Um, it doesn't actually show, it's just a way of copying and pasting some sample statement, okay? Um, really quick thing, you probably wanna to link to a privacy policy in your official text here. Um, I, you know, check your laws, it might be required, it might not be, uh, but you probably wanna do that. Um, next up is behavior. Um, important here, it uses implied consent by default. This means that all JavaScript code is ran by default, okay? And it is only it only stops running if the user explicitly rejects cookies. So even though cookie jar can be shown, um, the JavaScript will still run, okay, until the user clicks reject. So that's an important thing. If you now, if you uncheck implied consent, this means that you want explicit consent. This means that JavaScript will not run, okay, the JavaScript that you configure inside the stack will not run until the user explicitly clicks the accept button, okay? So very important distinction between those two things. Um, we have a limit by buttons here, which I passed over. You can limit by occurrences, so you can only show it X number of times, okay? If you uh, turn this off, it's unlimited. Same thing for duration. Um, if you want to only show the cookie jar statement on your page for a certain amount of time and then it'll auto hide itself, you can do that with this. Um, by default, it'll show indefinitely uh, with that turned on, okay? The test mode uh, basically is, I know it's a lot of times it's tricky if you accidentally click accept inside RapidWeaver, this test mode makes sure that you can always preview cookie jar inside RapidWeaver, okay? So if you want to make sure that you can always test it, just go ahead and click on this test mode and you'll always be able to preview cookie jar whether or not you click accept or reject or whatever. Next up, we have the JavaScript code areas, okay? This first box here, this is where you're gonna paste in your analytics code. So whether or not that's from Google or, you know, Pwik or, you know, Clicky, whatever analytics service you use, GoSquared is another one, right? Just go ahead and paste that JavaScript code in here. Now, an important thing is you have to make sure that you do not contain the script tags. There's a little note down here. You do not want the little script tags. You want just the content that's inside the script tags. Okay, so that's very important. Now, if you have any, you have any other code that you want from, I don't know, from some other widget or something like that, you can go and paste that here um, in this other code area. And again, same rules apply. No script tags, just straight up JavaScript goes inside these boxes. Okay. 
And the code that's inserted here is totally controlled by whether or not you know the person accepts or rejects cookies. Okay. Um, if you look inside this demo, I have like a little alert box. Um, this doesn't work inside Rapid Weaver, but if you preview in a browser, you'll see that you'll get the alert uh, pop-up box inside um, you know your default browser. So that's a, a nice way of, ch of testing. Um, just putting this little alert code that you know it'll it'll pop up a, a JavaScript alert for you, and you have to click OK. And then um, you know that way you can test whether or not the script actually runs or not. So uh, that's that's a handy little tool. Next up is external scripts. Now, if you have a URL to a warehoused you know JavaScript file that you want to load externally when a user accepts a cookie, okay, you can do that here. So instead of pasting the JavaScript inside these boxes, you can load up to four separate JavaScript files just by putting in the URLs to those JavaScript files. Okay. So uh, really easy, simple stuff there. Just so you can see what a new cookie jar stack looks like, um, when you add cookie jar to the page, you can add whatever you know text stack that you want you know, up here in the statement area. Um, and then you add any button you want into accept and any button you want into reject, and it should work. So whether or not you're using foundation buttons or sweep button or you know the default stacks button or whatever button you want, okay, you can use those inside these drop areas. Now you can put whatever tech stack you want inside here as well. And if you notice cookie jar has zero like tech styling options, that's because all of those tech styling options will be done by whatever your favorite tech stack that you want to add into the statement area contains, right? So that way, you know, it'll leverage either the framework or the theme that you're using um, and it'll just inherit. So you can make everything look identical to your theme. Now, if you choose the advanced layout area, you'll notice that there is you know, no drop zone here, okay? So what you can do is uh, you can add whatever um, stacks that you want in here. So if I wanna go ahead and add in, uh, so if I wanna go ahead and add like just like a text stack, okay? Or I can add, let's say a two column stack with text inside there, okay? Now, I, if I wanna add my buttons, I can go ahead and say, there's child stacks here for accept button wrapper. And when you do that, basically, this is the drop zone where you'd add an accept cookie, okay? And if you click on it, the other one, obviously, in the reject, this is where you add a reject button, okay? So let's look at the layout that I already created here. And in this stack, you'll notice that I had a two-column stack. I added some text, okay? And then over here in the second column, I added a sweep button stack that will be my accept and a sweep button stack that will be my reject button. So for preview of the page, you'll see down at the bottom, I have my cookie statement with my accept and decline buttons that I created inside sweep button. Now inside cookie jar on the advanced layout page, you'll notice that I have an example of using an external script here. So here I'm loading an external script from my server. So this is just sandbox.jorgonet.net slash alert.js, okay? Um, and that code will only run Right, when cookies have been accepted. Now to show you that in action, here is the advanced layout page. Now this is currently set to be explicit consent. So no JavaScript is run until I click on this accept button, okay? So if you notice, once I click this accept button, that remote JavaScript file that I loaded is executed, okay? And because that with that alert.js file that we just saw earlier that I added to the stack actually you know, loads a pop-up window. So if I close that, you'll notice that the JavaScript ran, the consent thing uh, hid, and if I refresh the page, that remote script is always gonna load now because I accepted um, that cookie request. So that's cookie jar 2.0, everybody. I hope you enjoy it, I hope you like it. As you saw that, you know, I really tried to streamline what it does, right? It doesn't do any styling, right? You add whatever style components you want to the stack and it does what it does best, right? Um, displaying a modal, accepting clicks on accept and reject, and manages those cookies for you and executing the JavaScript or not, right? So it does all of those things well. It does them really well. And it's simple because it's all encapsulated in the stack. You don't need to worry about snippets and you know adding some weird syntax into your global config somewhere. It's just all encapsulated inside the stack. And uh, I hope you enjoy this free update. It's really cool. And uh, if you like it, let me know over on Weaver Space. We'll talk to you soon. Bye.